Hi, my name is Ainda Nita. I'm a rheumatologist at Rush University. Uh, we have a lupus center at Rush, so I see a large volume of lupus patients. I see lupus patients in my lupus clinic once a week, uh, but I can see lupus patients every other day of the week as well. So I see a lot of variety of lupus that varies from very mild to very aggressive disease. So I have a great exposure and uh, I love dealing with lupus patients. Lupus is an autoimmune condition. Uh, it affects about 5 million people worldwide and 1.5 million Americans. Uh, although this is somewhat prevalent condition, yet the awareness about this disease lags behind some of the other illnesses. Lupus is an autoimmune condition, meaning that our immune system is somewhat confused and instead of fighting uh, the infections, it, it acts against our own cells causing inflammation and organ damage and it may vary from very mild to very aggressive disease affecting uh, major organ systems in our body. Uh, it has a prevalence uh, higher for minorities uh, such as African Americans, Hispanics, Native Americans, the prevalence is much higher than the Caucasian population. It affects mostly young women of childbearing age, uh, ranges from 15 to 44 years old, uh, although it can affect uh, younger and older population. Um, the, the ratio among women to men is nine, somewhat between nine to 10 per one, um, and uh, that is much higher during the childbearing age. That means that probably the hormones have an impact in, in lupus. Uh, what causes lupus is not entirely known, but there is many different um, theories. And although there is no answer yet, we know that it runs in families, so it has a genetic component. So people with family history of, are somewhat of a higher risk for developing lupus. So that, that means that probably someone has a relative with lupus should be aware of it, and it might be at a higher risk of developing this disease. In order to make the diagnosis of lupus, someone has to meet specific criteria ranging from blood test results to clinical criteria. And sometimes if someone doesn't meet the, uh, the whole set of criteria, but it's in that gray zone, yet even without making the diagnosis of lupus, we should keep a close eye and monitoring those blood tests. Something very important I wanted to touch upon is that lupus can be a silent disease. Uh, it may not have clinical activity, but silently can affect major organ systems such as kidneys, and uh, it may cause irreversible damage. So that's why it's very important for lupus patients to stay in close contact with the healthcare providers, uh, either primary care or rheumatologist, and make sure that they have periodic testing to avoid these complications. So here at Rush, we, we do a lot of research ranging from the quality of care research uh, uh, where there is a lot of patients involvement with these questionnaires and looking from a patient's perspective how can impact and help uh, in treating and curing this disease and there is also a lot of clinical uh, research with new drug developments that we participate in clinical trials to come up with new treatment options for lupus. Again, lupus could be very mild with symptoms that uh, may not be very specific such as fatigue, uh, joint aches and pains, not feeling well, and so someone might not be aware that this could be the starting signs and symptoms of a very uh, serious illness. So there is many different tests such as antinuclear antibody, which is a screening tool for lupus, and if someone tests positive for, for this antibody, uh, should be aware of the signs and symptoms and uh, get periodic checking and see if there is any uh, serological progression or any other concerning uh, blood test that may lead one to making a diagnosis of lupus. Someone that might have a positive uh, serology uh, should be at higher risk and therefore should be periodically checked and um, 
you know, get ahead of this very serious illness. Lupus, um, as we said, can run in families. It has a genetic component and people with other autoimmune activities, autoimmune diseases are at high risk of developing another autoimmune disease such as lupus. So those are people with uh, autoimmune activity that are, are at higher risk. Um, and they should get checked for lupus if they have any signs and symptoms concerning, such as fatigue, not feeling well, arthralgia, and more specific, like skin rash, and specifically the butterfly rash. Uh, besides the subspecialty clinics, the lupus clinics, there is a lot of great resources for the lupus community, ranging from lupus uh, society of Illinois, to other national societies, group supports. We have one here at Rush. Uh, we meet periodically with patients and we provide a lot of information, not only in the clinical side, but the, the social aspects of this uh, very devastating disease. Uh, so those are available um, through meetings uh, throughout the year, lupus walk, uh, and there's websites also with great information for lupus patients.